office and ever since then yeah like it's gone gone better and better really and is that always the aim like yeah sp- is it sports in general or is it the main focus football for you uh main focus is football but i like other sports as well but ever since yeah you obviously dream that you're going to be a footballer when you're young and thankfully my mum was like no you're not like you're just not so ever since the age of about six i kind of knew i wanted to do this i've been writing ever since i was really young and this has always been the the main game yeah absolutely and from your sort of point of view, I mean, being a journalist is a really, not, not a weird job, it's, it's a normal <laughs> job, we've all heard of it, but for me as a football fan, yeah. I always feel 50-50 when it comes to uh, interacting with journalists and, and, and talking about football, because when you've got your bias head on, mm-hmm. I certainly feel at times my club, Man United, are like unfairly targeted by the media and by the press. So the so question I've got for you, when... I don't know, when you're in your meetings at work and when you're talking to your editors and, 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 and your bosses, is there an agenda at times to say, right, these, this club, let's just like Arsenal, we're going to focus on putting out as much negative press as we can about them because we want to generate a bit of a, a storm in a teacup. Do those kind of conversations happen? Do you know of them, whether it's at your paper or elsewhere? I have never, ever known of a meeting like that at any newspaper. I, I can understand why as a football fan... Obviously, yeah, Man United, for example, you're reading a lot of negative stuff at the moment. Like, yeah, four games into the season, five points on the board. Yeah, it's not gone a great start. But there's never an agenda. Yeah, we report the good news, the bad news. And that is something in which I can understand why football fans may feel that way and may feel targeted. But that has never, ever come into mind on either in my yeah. newspaper or any other newspaper I know. Yeah, and I get that. And look, I, I go, I do a lot of, <laughs> I do a lot of fake news videos where I debunk stories. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I, I, I accuse the journalists of lying, mm-hmm. but there are other times where I think they're just reporting on the information that they've been given. Yeah. But I suppose my biggest bugbear as a, as a football fan is when I when I read a story, and it might be. Like one I read yesterday, actually. Mm-hmm. Paul Pogba agreed a deadline day move to Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah. And it was taken from an Italian publication. Mm-hmm. But the stories that were printed here or, or published online, it was just three or four paragraphs of regurgitated information that had already been presented with um, over the course of the summer with one or two lines from the Italian newspaper there was no quotes there was you know where did they get the information from where was it so there was almost there was nothing to it if that makes sense it wasn't yeah, really no. a story it was just a case of oh, I heard this rumour I'm going to tell you guys about it and they're the ones that probably frustrate me because it's okay to turn around and say this is what this journalist has said and this journalist has re- reported this information from these people do you understand why football fans get frustrated with that? I can understand that 100% but in defence of uh, the journalists like these football clubs they have their guard up and journalists have to have to really work for these stories and journalists would not publish something that they feel would tarnish their reputation they publish information knowing this is what they've been told by somebody and they, the reason there won't be quotes always in sort of those sort of articles is because the person they've got it from, they can't be seen to be to be quoting. Yeah, if you've got this information from inside United, like you can't do that. You can't then kind of like, oh, oh you yeah, know, this mm. was United telling me this, this, this. Like, yeah, you know, even if if it is like, yeah, you because know, then you run the risk of getting somebody else into trouble, and you run run the risk of kind of... Well, you're going to destroy your sources, aren't you? Right, exactly, yeah. You're, you're good, uh, yeah. No, I, I it's it's not good practice to... Uh, to in, yeah, if in football, everybody relies on everybody. Yeah, you know, there's... They're all so intrinsically linked and you can't really do anything to, to upset that relationship. So I can understand that Pogba story. Yeah, yes, it came from an Italian source. And sure, there's a lot of information there which has already been floated about, but forget the rest of that you know that was their brand new line and that was what they were saying saying happened and they're going to run with it if they've been told that they're going to run with it okay and, and i and i, I kind of get that do you, do you feel that the, the relationship between football fans and journalists has never been great so the, the, the transfer rumors it's always one of these things whether it's a transfer rumor or a, an article or an opinion piece if it supports your narrative football fans 
are a journalist's best friend. Sure. And I always give this example. Um, the Sun newspaper. Liverpool fans especially despise them. Mm-hmm. And I get why. Now, I make them right to, to a certain level um, to have that, that, that anger and, and that kind of passion to try and... Even trying to shut them down to an... Like, not even to an extent. That's what they're trying to do. Let's ban it. Let's get rid of it. Let's end it. However, where I get frustrated at football fans... So this is where I would defend <coughs> journalism is that when the sun, or back in the day, the news of the, 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 the news of the world, which was basically the Sunday Sun, it's the mm-hmm. same newspaper, if they run a story that Liverpool fans could use to ban a Man United with, they took the word as gospel. You know, and I've had Liverpool fans this summer laugh, ah, oh, look, you know, you're paying Rashford £300,000 a week, you mugs, he's not even worth that. And I'm like, mate, that's, the Sun started that rumour back in April. No, sure. no, I read it in the Mirror. Yeah, the R- Mirror have just done, run the Sun story, which everybody does. They all share each other's stories mm-hmm. and give their own opinion on it. That's where I, I, I get so frustrated with football fans. It's like, you can't today call a newspaper or all journalists lying uh, fake news scumbags and then tomorrow take their information as gospel truth because you're using it to banter somebody or as confirmation bias to prove your point on something and I I think that's where I'll always defend sort of the journalistic side of things I'll challenge certain stories or opinions because I think that's fair yes but this notion and I've said it to a long time to football fans you tomorrow might run a story that Man United are going to sign Jadon Sancho in in January because sure. someone's told you that. Somebody, yes. a director at Borussia Dortmund has told you. But between now and January, Man United, Dortmund, or the player could change their mind. It's not down to you. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's yeah. a bit, I'm like, like the journalist, I, mean, I get it, making videos online. People are like, oh my God, Terry, you reported on all these transfer rumours, only three have happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm even less inclined to say I've got a source. I don't say I've got a source. I'm just yeah, telling you sure. what the media have said. Of course. Don't blame me. Yeah, yeah. If it doesn't happen. I'm yeah. not saying it even will. I'm exactly. just simply stating this is it. What do you think? Would you like this to happen? Would it be a great signing? Would it be a bad signing? Uh, you know, whatever it may be. Um, this is where I think uh, kind of like uh, one complaint. Yeah, obviously football fans, great. For the most part, honestly, it's great but sometimes they don't always read or listen to the greater thing. So, you know, there can be a story with which a certain person has written and, you know, football fans won't like it, but it's not them saying it. It could be other people saying it, you know, it could be quotes from a pundit or something, you know, it, it takes a bit of reading. It, it, and sometimes <laughs> you're just yeah. kind of like, you could read something and just switch. You know, you won't even read the full amount because you're like, you know, you get so pent up. There's so much kind of like anger among football fans on social media, especially during the transfer season. Oh, mate, I, I, you're speaking my language when it comes to that. <laughs> the amount of times I release content and there are comments saying, but Terry, what about these three things? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mate, that's in the video. Yes. I cover that because what I tend to do is go with the, the headline that's being presented. Of course, whether yeah, it's yeah. by, as you say, by the pundit, by mm-hmm. a fan, whoever so I, I have people phone the show sometimes it isn't even a newspaper thing it could be one of our one of our viewers phoning the show we had a guy last year who said um, Mo Salah is overrated flat track bully and not as good as however many players so sure. we, we could, kind of made a headline that went along those lines before it was released because it was on like a uh, like we, we have this thing on there where you can preview it so it, it, although it's pre-recorded it, it looks like it's coming out live yes it had something like 300 dislikes before anybody had even watched it. Now I understand that you don't have, if you don't like this guy's opinion, you're allowed to dislike the video. But there were also comments left. It's like, I can't believe you're saying this, Terry. You're a scumbag. You're this. You're that. You're just a hater. If you watch the video, I defend. I'm a Man United fan, of course, and I defended Mo Salah to the hill. Yeah, but yeah. These people weren't prepared to listen to what was said, and then it's like. You, some of them then watching go, oh, I didn't realise you were defending him. It's like, yes, don't worry about the headline. Of course. Read yeah, the body yeah. of the story, Definitely. top to bottom. And, and then sometimes it's a case of, so when I read the Pogba story yesterday, I then went mm-hmm. and found the original story. Yeah, and yeah. And read that. That's what I gave my opinion from. Not the Express or the Sun or the Mirror or the Mail that have just sort of reiterated it, if that makes sure. sense. And I think that that's, in, that's my message to football fans is you've got to dig deeper, read everything, and then get an understanding what are the newspaper doing are they giving an opinion or are they presenting you with the information that's available in the market if it is just the information why are you shooting the messenger yeah yeah you know, exactly if, if yes. it's, 
if it's the Wednesday spread mm -hmm. and it's this is my opinion on Man United this season okay you can go in on the journalist if you disagree because yeah, he's giving yeah. you an opinion yeah. but people conflate the two things massively but um, 100% I think it's all about um, kind of like yeah just uh, just patience yeah having that patience yeah we're in this day and age you're back you used to go and get newspapers yeah you could you'd have to go out buy it and stuff everything is online now it's immediately accessible yeah. which means that people are moving around news stories quicker than they ever did before they're jumping uh -huh. from story to story to story and because they're so active obviously that can lead to then them becoming really riled over things yeah of course absolutely and social media creates more of it as well and i think that you know back in the day when i was young you know you, you wanted to know what was going on there was a, there was sky sports but they didn't have a 24 hour operation channel. yeah yeah and transfer window you got your information from the back of the newspapers every morning and you'd read the story yes and apart from talking to your friends about it you would wait until the next day to hear anything or, exactly. or, or the news at six o'clock on Sky Sports would come out mm -hmm. or, or, or national news on ITV or that's when you'd be sitting there glued to the TV waiting for the information or you'd keep checking the club's website when they came out but because of the way it works now everybody wants information 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 that's all I look at the newspapers now online and the YouTube channels are doing you know two three four updates a day this is what we know uh, we've heard this rumor from this publication in mm -hmm. Italy we've heard this in France we've heard this from a British journalist you know, the players tweeted this. You want the information, but you're only happy with it if it suits, if, if it suits you, you. Yeah, or if yeah. it's what you want to hear. Otherwise, it's all fake, it's all lies, it's all bullshit, or people are just hating on your club. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think the football fans have got to grow a bit of a, a bit more of a backbone when it comes to these things. I think also, like, what should always be remembered is every journalist out there got into the industry because they want to give information to readers. Yeah, yeah. They they want to, you know, inform people. Yeah, that that's why everybody got into the job. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then if you inform people and people don't like it, I think sometimes it crosses a line. I think disagree all you want, it's fine. But when it gets abusive, when it gets you know, too much, that's why I think there's a rocky relationship between journalists and fans. Is because yeah, journalists more and more now in social media have to have their guard up. Yeah, no, I understand that completely. I th I've reached out to a few people to come onto the mm. podcast, and they're like, uh, "I don't know," because I'm not very well known. Yeah, which sure. is you know part and parcel of it. They're like, "I don't know who you are, what you're doing. You want to come pick me up in your car and drive around? That's weird." Yeah. You know, <laughs> you could be some angry fan who's, and I get that. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, of and course. That's a, that's, a, that's a you know worrying about your safety. But I yeah, agree. Yeah. It's, it's the reason why football players don't interact with fans as much because it's just consistent abuse right exactly and for whatever 100%. reason people think they've got the right to abuse and I always say this to people like imagine you were doing your day job whether you lay brick whether you're a solicitor or you're a cashier in a bank it doesn't matter what you are imagine you consistently all day long got abuse at every exactly. little thing you did yeah because what you'll find in life no matter how good you are at something there are always a group of people that are not going to like it yes exactly but we now have this group of people that are like I don't like what you do Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you that I don't like it and why I don't like it. Ricky Gervais did this really brilliant thing <laughs> when he was talking about social media. And he was looking at... Um, he basically said he tweets something out and people kick off at him and have a go at him and tell him that they don't like it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, that's like walking down to your local town centre, going up to the... You know, you get those boards, in, especially in villages, and there's like singing lessons and dog walking services people put their business cards up and whatever he said it's like walking up to one of them and getting angry that somebody's offering guitar lessons because you don't want guitar lessons yeah it's like yeah. it's not there exactly. for you it's there for people that do want it yes and exactly. it's like if you don't like the sun stories if you don't like the expresses stories don't read them but clearly you do spend time reading them otherwise mm -hmm. you wouldn't know you didn't like them right exactly <laughs> it's just yeah, it's yeah. weird there, there, are, there are a couple of newspapers that I don't or journalists I don't particularly like their opinions or mm -hmm. behaviours so I just don't read them I, but I don't abuse them it's just no, yeah, exactly. it's my preference you know? of course it's, it's, yeah, it's one yeah. of the things so in terms of football this season Premier League where do you see it going